Well, Swartzy, as you know, I need to make a decision if you're going to be staying with us for the rest of the season here at AVR. Now, I've got to be honest with you, mate. You, uh, you were disappointing me. You really, really were. But these last few races, mate, you've picked it up. You've picked it up. You've got some points on the board. So you can stay. You can stay for the rest of the season. But I want to see consistent point scoring from you. And some Russian sponsorship wouldn't go astray either. Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome back to Aussie Villain Racing. Today it is the Italian Grand Prix. I think it's round 12 of the championship. And uh, well, we've got some big decisions to make starting off with what do we do with uh, with Schwarzman. Now, as I kind of uh, have given away there, I've decided we would like to keep him. He's wants 3 million now, but the last few races, let's be honest, he's done quite well. He beat me, of course, last time out in Zanvoort. So let's just get this done. And uh, hopefully there's not going to be any issues here. And there we go. So we have Swartzman tied down to the end of the season. And then we're going to have to make another decision as to exactly what we do with him. Uh, I kind of want all the drivers and the teams to change around a little bit. So I'm almost tempted to go and sign another driver just to force things from changing. Now you can see we've only got uh, the two-day break between this Italian Grand Prix and last race, which was, of course, in Holland. Uh, simulator training for Swartzman, I'm thinking, is probably what we want to do. A marketing strategy conference. That sounds boring, doesn't it? So let's get Swartzman in the simulator, and that will take us through. Uh, we've got some messages here. Uh, that is uh, basically the that's the performance chart, isn't it? So we'll see that again later on. But you can see we're sort of there in fifth. Comfortable, sort of just sitting between Ferrari and Aston Martin, aren't we? Uh, now, facilities, we have two million. We know that we have the money to... Now, one thing I do want to do is build up a little bit of a bank to see if we could maybe... Um, if we do want to go bigger than Schwarzman, we might need to have some extra cash. But two million is not going to be enough to increase anything else to the uh, to the next spec. R&D, if we go across, we can see there that there is a little bit in progress, a major upgrade that should be coming. Is it come for this race? I think it's this one or is it the next one. So let's go and have a look. We've got 1,500 points to spend. Now, of course, last race, the plan was to, was to get this uh, road to speed, wasn't it? Which uh, increases the energy, the battery energy, I believe, that we would get. But we saw, I think we've seen, especially well, last race especially, that I don't think the power trains out issue. The issue that we have is sort of downforce. The faster the corner, the more we seem to struggle. So I'm wondering if we go with this. Do we want front end? I think maybe that'll help us get into corners a little bit better. A little bit of extra downforce. So let's go with that. It'll pretty much be everything done. We'll get it just after the next race, which is the uh, the Russian Grand Prix. So we'll have it for Singapore. So we'll do that. That is said, that's pretty much us are indeed out for this one. Uh, but it is a big step forward for us if it is uh, if it is there for us. You can see the way the season is uh, is tracking. We are closing the gap on uh, Ferrari, McLaren, and Red Bull, aren't we? Significantly over recent races, so we uh, we're in a good spot there. And we we are the fifth best team, quite comfortably ahead of Aston Martin, who look like they've plateaued a little bit after the Dutch race. Um, everything on the power unit side of things is good enough it'll get us through the next race at least the gearbox is going to be its final race before we get a new one uh weekend tire allocation we can see that there the corporate side of things sponsorship is all the same now we just renewed the contract so we have him till the end of the season him of course being Swartzman. the driver market yeah i mean well it's something it's a conversation to have a little bit later in the year isn't it but i'm looking at if maybe like someone like a Pierre Gasly, would he be interested in leaving uh, Alonso? I don't know. I've seen other uh, other series that other YouTubers have done with drivers retire, and we just haven't had. I mean, Kimi Raikkonen. Maybe we get Kimi. That would be good, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you love to have Kimi as a teammate? I'm wondering. I mean, Sonoda is maybe the one, isn't he? He's cheaper and uh, Stroll. I mean, these guys, their asks and demands are going up all the time, aren't they? So. Giovinazzi is another one at 80 that might be interesting, but I mean, Schwarzman is, is not that far behind and he's, he's way, way cheaper. So I think for the time being, anyway, it's a case of uh, sticking with Schwarzman. That's my, let me know your opinion on that, of course. Uh, we can see there the driver contract has set us back financially, but obviously we need to have a driver in the second car, don't we? The standings. So after a non-scoring, a non-point scoring race for us, but points for uh, Schwarzman in the last one, 
We are still ninth in the championship ahead of Gasly. Uh, Alpha Tauri, though, have moved eight points clear of us in the Constructors, but sixth would still be a massive success for us this season, I think. You can see all the results. Recently, Schwartzman, two of the last three races, has uh, picked himself up some points, which is excellent from him. Trophies, now last season in Italy, we came home with points. We came home in ninth which at the time was one of our better results. And of course, sixth in Sochi was our equal best with uh, Melbourne last year. So hopefully we'll get some more points here. The rivalry with Alonso with two races to go, it's going to be difficult for us to lose it, which is good. And uh, the driver details, we can see all my driver ins and outs there. And uh, that is that. So let's go and sim ahead here and get ready for the Italian race. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. Simulator training for Schwartzman. We've had a power spec upgrade. Uh, now that was that. Oh no, that's the facility. That's the yeah. That's that's uh, that's. Hang on, let me go. That is this thing, isn't it? The powertrain has gone up, so that is good. And uh, well, let's head off to Italy and uh, yeah, some free practice. All right, so we can see the track map there. If you're unfamiliar with Monza, the weather forecast is dry and the performance comparison, as well, we've already seen that really, haven't we? So as ever, I'm going to go off and do free practice. I will see you for qualifying one and we've got a wet practice session coming up as well. But uh, yeah, let's hope that it's uh, it goes well for us this weekend. All right, free practice is done. Bit of a strange one. We were sort of in and around with Schwartzman as well, the top 10 for the first two practice sessions. Uh, free practice three. Usually I do a qualifying sim. I didn't do that this time. That wasn't one of the, the, the things that the team wanted me to do to get the R&D points. Um, and we were 17th in free practice three. So I think we're quick. I'm not really sure though. So let's find out. All right, this is actually our second run. You can see we're sitting in P19 after the first run. Uh, it wasn't the, wasn't the greatest, just scrappy laps, not quite getting turn-ins and breaking points right. Hopefully, we're going to see a nice improvement on that this time around. Oh, it's so difficult to get the gas down from that. You can see even so. I mean, that was a terrible exit, but we're still ahead of where we were. That gives you a rough idea of... Uh, yeah, we're not quite there yet. And this lap is better. That just gives you an idea of roughly how scrappy the other laps were. 8 tenths up and it's not it's well the first sector was nothing short of a disaster really was it? This is the part of the track the car should work relatively well at, given that, I mean, most of the track, to be honest, but this is sort of two long straights now. And it looks as though we're going to be almost a second faster, and that should be enough to get us into Q2, I would think and hope. Let's see what we've done here. It's going to be P12. So in the end, it was good enough. Uh, P13 at the end of the session, just ahead of Robert Schwartzman. But there's a lot more to come from us if we can get that first sector right, isn't there? So let's head into Q2. All right, we're coming around. It'll be our first real lap. I've just done sort of not even a banker, just a bit almost a warm up lap, just to try and get a little bit of extra temperature in the tires. And we'll go for it on this lap. Because we have to start the race if we want to get through on the set of tyres that we do our best lap on in this one. Now that was not too bad through the chicane there, was it? Uh, I suspect that maybe the first lap out, the tyres were a bit cold. So hopefully, that was indeed the case. And there's only one lap of pushing remaining. this lap, we'll see the benefit of that. Come on. I mean, five seconds up. What's that? A 23. We should may have more time to make, though, because we were just cruising, as I say, through most of the lap. Six, seven seconds is what we're getting down to. I've got to do mouse while I drive. That's not safe for anybody. 21 is going to be close, but I don't think it's going to be good enough. 
That's about as much speed as we can carry through there. And what have we done? It is P5. Go on. So in the end, it was just good enough to get us through. I didn't want to do another lap because it would have meant starting on then older tyres again. Unfortunately, Swartzman has been pipped by our on-track rival Alonso. But we go into Q3. And, well, there's quite a gap between us and Danny Rick Ricardo. What's that? Three tenths of a second. But if we can catch that up, there's quite a few cars in that little gaggle there. So, well, let's just do our best in Q3. We have two laps of fuel remaining. All right, here we go. This is... We've already done a lap. We did a lap on used tyres. Now, these tyres should be half a second quicker. I've driven the out lap, so hopefully we're going to be raring to go here. We're currently in 10th, as you can see. Oh, what? That's my best exit, I think, ever of any chicane in the history of this game. <laughs> so we're already way, way up over the bank up. Um, so that's excellent, obviously. Let's see if we can nail this one. A purple first sector. That's made the paddock stop and take notice, hasn't it? Let's see if we can keep this going. All right, seven tenths up. Half of that maybe is the tires, but the other half is just nailing a lap, which is unlike me. Maybe a little concern. 1.5 seconds up on the previous best. Could we be on for pole here? A low 20 would almost, or well, certainly have us in the conversation. Head down, come on. Come on. What have we done? We have done P6. Well, that's disappointing. So it is P6 in the end, uh, which is, I'm happy with that, I'll be honest. That is, uh, that is excellent. So we'll be on the third row of the grid, uh, unless there's some penalties elsewhere. And we're the fastest Australian, which is always nice, isn't it? All right, let's go to this race. With, with the, the race, race minutes, minutes away from starting, starting here's, here's what today's, today's grid rundown, rundown looks, looks like. like. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Norris, Charles Leclerc, Oldtimer, Ricardo, Perez, Sainz, and Fernando Alonso, Schwartzman, Vettel, Pierre Gasly, and Stroll, Sonoda, Ocon, Antonio Giovinazzi and Kimi Raikkonen, Russell, Latifi, Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. So our best starting position in a long time, Sportsman right there with a chance of points as well. Obviously our race strategy is a little bit... Uh, hampered because we can only we have to start on the tires that we started on uh qualified on i should say we'll take a little bit of petrol out i'm wondering if we want to push the stop back a lap um maybe not though maybe not anyway this is a, as i said a high up as we started in a long long time so let's see if we can uh, bring home a strong result all right italian grand prix a decent to good qualifying look at us there on the third row can we get a good start it's not bad, is it, compared to those around us? Can we get a run here? Whoa, someone off the inside there. Is that Daniel Ricciardo? We've been pinned in by the McLarens. Nowhere to go. So we're just going to try and not lose our front wing here on the back of Ricciardo's car. A Ferrari trying to do a sneaky one. But we'll sort of see him off. And P7. So we just lose the one spot off the line to the fast starting Daniel Ricciardo. But that's okay, we'll take that. Look at Swartzman up there in 10th as well. Hanging on to a point at this very, very early stage. But if we can just settle into a rhythm. Get our rocket ship going down the straights. There is definitely an opportunity to move forward. What we need to do is make sure we're staying in that DRS zone of Ricardo in front. And we are ever so close to dropping out of it. Now, of course, there is no DRS for the first two laps. You can see we're on the battery there. But we just need to stay inside that as much as anything to protect us from those behind because if we are at the front of a train uh it's going to be very difficult to to make sure people aren't getting past us but so far so good just inside that second we need a big second lap here though 
Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the ICE. Be aware that we will start to see a lot of power. Seriously, Jeff, at Monza? God damn it. Yeah, so not the greatest news as we begin the second lap of the race. Yeah, that's uh, going to hamper us, isn't it? We're going to skip ahead now to the uh, sort of halfway through the third lap. So DRS is now active. You can see Ricardo has got past Leclerc in front of us. And we have sights behind us. So with being down on power, we need DRS. We have DRS. We just need to make sure we're hanging on to it. Whether even DRS, we, I don't know how much power we're going to lose. But we can see we certainly were able to close up on Leclerc there, even though he did have... Oh, we've run wide out of uh, the Ascari chicane there, which isn't great. It's given Charles, uh, Carlos Sainz a chance. So he's on the outside going into the parabolic, or is it Michele Alberetto curve or whatever it's called now. Uh, so he's not going to get around the outside there. But what that has done, of course, is put us on the back foot coming on down the straight now with that narrow entry into the corner. Leclerc and Where Ricardo the window, you'll be on the mediums. are battling in front of us. On the MFD. Gap to teammate we do still have DRS on the brakes seconds. we go. Ricardo leaves the door open and we walk through it and somehow manage not to drive into the back of Leclerc. So we're back up to where we started in sixth. And Ricardo has uh, looked like going to lose out to Carlos Sainz as well. So he's dropped three places in a lap. But a very opportunistic move there. He was too busy with his battle with Leclerc. And we've uh, kind of mugged him off there. Now, oh, deep into the chicane. Is that going to lose this DRS on Leclerc? It is by a long, long way as well. And, well, this is where we could run into a little bit of trouble now. We needed to stay in that DRS. And, of course, with being down on power... It's going to be difficult on a power circuit like Bonza to even close the gap back up again. All we can really do is just try and stay in the slipstream that the battling behind us. Is Ricardo going to lose another place to Perez? He has. Ricardo sinking like a stone from 5th all the way down to... Or oh, not 10th, where's what? 11th. So 5th down to 9th. Poor old Danny Rick is uh, not having a good lap. But we are still, what are we, 1.7 seconds behind Leclerc now. We have, uh, not Perez, Sainz still in DRS of us. Now, hopefully, he's going to be worried about those behind us. But we skip ahead to the end of lap five now. You can see nothing much has changed. We're still in between the two Box Ferraris. Understood, stopping this lap. Late, late call to coming to the pits. Now, the reason we've done this... Coming in a lap earlier than, uh, than uh, what's the word? Not predicted, than scheduled. There's the word. Uh, the main reason is I'm going to try and get an undercut on Leclerc. I don't... We're not catching him otherwise. And, uh, go, go, go. yeah, this way we get out of a, any DRS risk to science and tagging him along. I'm hoping it'll work out for us. So, yeah, to kind of re play my strategy what we're thinking is that to get an undercut on Leclerc and not tag along Sainz so if he doesn't have DRS in front of him it might slow him down as well and hopefully we'll jump both Ferraris here but we're going to skip ahead and see how the strategy plays out we're at lap seven now you'll see on the big tower there's a lot of movement as people come in and uh, or stay out of uh, of the pits but here we go about to start lap eight which of course will mean what's that six laps to go and there is a car coming out of the pits, and it is Leclerc. Now, it's going to be a little bit slow, but we're too far back, and it's closed the gap. We should be within DRS, but it hasn't worked, has it? Uh, it didn't quite work. Are we in DRS, though? No, just... Unfortunately, we have since dropped out of DRS. <laughs> Leclerc got a much better exit out of that chicane than we did. And... Well, you... We'll see how, how it sort of shakes out with uh, with other people making stops. Mazepen is in front here. Maybe he can slow up Leclerc for us, but I'm not, he would not have already stopped, would he? So you would imagine eight laps in on softs. He's not going to be out on the track for too much longer. Oh, uh, DRS. DRS will be offline. There's a fault with the rear wing system. Stay out. We can work on a fix remotely. Jeff, you are killing me, mate. Absolutely killing me. Down on power, no DRS. Why do I friggin' bother? So never mind DRS uh, range. It's not going to affect us. We don't have DRS. And, well, suddenly it's very much... We just want to try and hold station and make sure that uh, Perez behind us 
and anybody else. You can see there's more cars in and out of the pits there. We just If somebody gets DRS on us, we're in big trouble. Down on power and we have no DRS. We, it's it's not gone well this race has it but uh, let's be positive we're still sitting we're in p7 we've got uh who's in front of us whoever's leading the race it looks like you want a short filming as well jeff maybe i should save some fuel you can say at least it hasn't affected me and I've, I've got over it and let it go uh yeah but there's a car in front. i want to say it might be sebastian vettel that is leading the race he obviously will still need to stop so that is an uh, an aggregate P6 that we're sitting in, so it's sort of as we were, but yeah, we're not much chance of moving forward, and well, like I say, being down on power, unfortunately, there's a very good chance that those behind us might catch us, but if, I mean, if we're doing okay so far, though, let's, let's say, not try and be too negative, we're running a decent pace, and as long as the engine doesn't get worse, and that's of course the caveat, isn't it? It could get worse. Not quite sure what I'm doing there. Just warming the tires <laughs> halfway through a stint, I think. But yeah, it's we just need to we just need to keep going, don't we? Keep going, and and hope a little bit wide through the parabolica there. I am, as you would imagine, I, I would think, really, really trying to maximise the corners. And instead of sort of oh, we've gone up to P6 now, so it is Vettel that was in the pits. So yeah, instead of sort of maybe breaking, you know, sort of at 99%, like I normally would, just try and build in a little bit of margin so that I'm not I'm not uh, binning it. We're very much trying to break right at the last point, just trying to make up as much time as possible. But of course, the risk of that, if I make a mistake, is is that Perez will be right on us, and he's, you can see he's inside that DRS. So he's just back outside it now, but he's flirting. He's inside it again. I just don't think now whether it's the car, it's uh, either way I've set it up. Whether it is maybe it is just the car. We don't really see what Schwartzman's doing, or whether it's just my driving style. We do seem to lack a little bit uh, in traction out of the slow corners. And then you've all seen. I mean. Uh, Gary Turpy in the comments and Discord is uh, a big fan of my tank slappers. <laughs> but, I mean, that's mostly, as far as I know, just me being a little bit too eager to get on the gas and uh, and spinning up the rears. So, whether or not, and of course, not being able to recover the speed down the straights. Yeah, it's it's not looking good. Perez is catching us, isn't he? And there's still three laps to go as we start lap 11 of 13. And Leclerc is, sadly, he's pulling out a gap. As you can see, I'm just trying to break the toe to Perez. I don't know if it's going to make any real difference, to be honest. But just trying to help him as little as possible. You can see coming into that into that chicane, he is he's making up a big, big chunk of time. And it's down to under half a second now. And that's getting to the point where he can, uh, he'll be able to drive past us on the straight when he with DRS open, particularly the main straight. What I'm, I'm trying to do at this point, if you see the battery, we don't have like, an incredible amount, but I'm trying to use it as strategically as possible, mostly out of corners, trying to get us up to our top speed as quickly as possible. And then you'll hopefully see it here, so be a good example. And then once we sort of get up to, yeah, to top speed there into eight gear, just turning it off to try and some save it. Information on Leclerc. They have some kind of mechanical problem. Gap to car in front is 2.8 Almost seconds. Perez there. Oh, Leclerc's out. Leclerc is out. So Leclerc has slowed down. We go one each side. It's like Schumacher Hakkinen all those years ago on the Camel Straight, isn't it? And that yellow flag may have just saved us a little Safe, bit. Safety car. In a dangerous position. Jeff, we need a safety car. Perez is pulling at me. Okay, the incident has been cleared. No. Let's get back up to racing speed. Not what I wanted, Jeff. That is racing speed, Jeff. My engine stuffed. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a safety car there would have been, in a way, ideal with uh, only two laps to go now. It may have uh, seen the race finish under safety car. Oh, not the best exit of this chicane there again. Uh, but of course, the risk would have been we would have been a sitting duck down the straights wouldn't we so maybe in hindsight sitting here now not in the middle of the race a safety car was the last thing we wanted have to defend from Perez though he's going to make sure we hit apexes here and there's no way past good exit and that is fine and oh almost too high up he should get quite a bit of aero wash through the two lesmos so 
Yeah, he does drop back a little bit onto the battery again. And, well, we're coming onto the last lap. This is, it, of course, the DRS caution. zone. Caution. Another caution. Now, is this still... I'm not actually sure. There's a car off to the right there. I don't know who it was. It might have been Kimi Raikkonen, actually. That's a Raikkonen. But not a good accident for us. I was trying to see who it was when I was driving. And it's given Perez a big, big opportunity. Now, again, he's on the outside of the Parabolico. He's not going to go through there. We've got Ricardo coming up on us as well. And we enter the last lap. And so this is Perez's last chance on the front straight. Final lap of the race. There's confirmation from Jeff. It is the final lap. We're sort of down the middle of the road. Perez to the outside. We're late, late on the brakes. Can we get through the chicane? We can. Look at Ricardo coming into the battle now as well. Perez doesn't look like he maybe got the best exit. I've uh, squirreled my way off to the outside dirt for some reason. And we are just draining the battery at this point. We just need to keep him behind us. He has not been able to find a way through. Oh, it's too narrow. I can see that. It's too narrow going in there. We've got a bad exit, but there's no way through for Perez. Ricardo is now all over the back of him. And we go through the Lesmos once more. And thankfully, it looks as though Perez is going to have his uh, mirrors full of Ricardo. But as DRS is open for the final time of the race, are we going to be able to keep Perez behind us? Oh, he's catching, he's catching, he's catching. He's going to the inside. It's too late. We get late on the brakes. And it's, it's Ricardo going in side by side. That slows up Perez. That buys us a bit of time. And... <clears throat> Uh, as I clear my throat in tension <laughs> that is hopefully going to be enough you can see we are on the button again as long as we don't drop it on the exit of the parabolic I hear that was hard work oh that's a good result with a hand tied behind our back all right race over take care of the car on the way in Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Right, Jeff, where are you, mate? We need to have some words. Why don't you try telling me before the race the engine is shit instead of doing it on the first lap? And for the love of God, make sure the DRS is working. I'm not good enough to race with all these problems. So there we go. It was as tough as it could have been. I don't know how much on, uh, down on power we were, but we, we didn't seem to be the rocket that we have been in previous races. And obviously DRS, we were never going to overtake anybody with that. And so thankfully Leclerc retiring obviously helped us go up to fifth. Uh, I would have been happy with sixth. I would have been happy with seventh in the end. Um, I didn't really want to drop any further back than that. But yeah, that was that was decent. Look at that for the win though. Four cars within a second and a half. If only we could get that in real life, wouldn't that be something special? We have beaten our on-track rival Alonso, so that should see us uh, ahead of him. Totally now winning that rivalry. In terms of the championship, we uh, pull further away from Gasly. We're not going to catch science. Ninth position is looking as though that's where we're going to be. And if we look at the constructors, fifth, we have, uh, we're have equal with Alpha Tauri, but for, we have the, the tiebreak or whatever that may be. So well, we got fourth. Did we get a fourth? I think we got a fourth, didn't we? So that, yeah, we did at, um, at Hungary, of course, uh, with the safety car. So, I mean, fifth in the constructors would be an absolutely wonderful thing if we could uh, be so lucky as to get that. But uh, there we go. That is the Italian Grand Prix run and won by Valtteri Bottas. So we can see the rivalry there. We've pulled out another four points. Uh, is that rivalry one? Yes, it is. So we've absolutely spanked him in the end. So that is excellent. And we'll have a new rival for next race, which will be exciting. And next race is, of course, the Russian Grand Prix. So if you've enjoyed that, make sure you hit thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. I will see you next time for the Russian Grand Prix. That is, of course, last season when we had our first of the series, our first really strong result as a team coming in sixth. So if we, who knows, maybe we could, uh, maybe we could jump on a podium there this season. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But that's all for next time, guys. Until then, I've been Aussie Villain. Thank you so much for watching. We have four and a half million in the bank, just about. I'll see you next time. Take care.